Hello everybody, my name is Antonina Brukova. Today is Saturday and it's time to tell you a new fairy tale. Today I will tell you about the Frog Prince. Once upon a time there was a very beautiful princess who lived with her father and three old sisters in a lovely castle. This particular princess, however, was one of those girls who knew how pretty she was and acted quite stuck up. She often teased her sisters for not being as beautiful as she was and boasted as she herself was the most attractive princess in the kingdom. One afternoon, the prince's father became so fed up with his daughter's bragging that he forbid her from the, her most favorite activity, swimming in the pond behind the castle. Until you acquire some modesty and learn to be kind to others, he cheated her. I don't want to catch even your toes in the water. The young princess was so upset, she ran straight to her bedroom. She banged her fist down on the bed and thought, It's not my fault that I am so prettier than everyone else. Why should I be punished for saying what is true? After she was done feeling sorry for herself, she grabbed her golden ball and went outside to sit by the edge of the pond. There she passed many hours throwing her ball up in the air and catching it again. As evening approached, she gave the ball an extra high toss, just as she was about to catch to catch it, a fly bit her on the leg and she reached down to sweat it. Whereupon the ball sailed by her and landed with a splash in the middle of the pond and sang. Don't eat, explained the princess. No, what shall I do? She considered jumping in to retrieve it, but was too afraid of what her father would do if he caught her. No, I've lost my favorite ball forever, she moaned and began to cry. Just then, a big bullfrog jumped on a stone besi beside her and crowed. Ribbit, what's the matter, young lady? he asked. Oh screamed the princess when she saw the frog. You are disgusting. Go away. Ribbit. Fine, I will leave. I just thought, Ribbit, you could help I could help you to get your ball back. But you see, Ribbit, but you are a rude girl who doesn't deserve my time. And the frog started to jump away. Seeing him go, the princess suddenly realized this ball frog might be her only chance to ever see her ball again and quickly change her to your... Oh, Mr. Frog, please come back, she said sweetly. I'm sorry for being so unkind. I'm just in a very grouchy mood today. You would be great. I would be grateful if you could bring me my ball. Well... Ribbit, replied the frog. Perhaps if you promise to do me a favor in return, Ribbit. Anything you want, offered the princess. So the frog dove under the still water and returned moments later with the princess ball. Oh, thank you, exclaimed the princess. She grabbed the ball and began running back toward the castle. Wait! called out the bullfrog. You forgot my favor. But princess just kept running. That night, while the princess sat at the dinner table with her father and her three sisters, there was a knock on a castle door. A moment later, their butler appeared and said, There is a frog to see the young princess. Tell him to go away, replied the princess. Wait just a second, said the king. Do you know this frog child? Of course not, said the princess. I mean, 
I might have seen him once by the pond, but I would never stoop to talk to su such a lovely, disgusting creature. The king eyed her daughter suspiciously. Show the frog in. We shall see what the business is with my daughter. The bullfrog hopped into the royal dining room and bowed before the king. Repeat, your highness, I am here to collect a debt from your daughter. Today I rescued her ball from the bottom of the pond. Repeat, and she promised me a favor in return. Repeat, but as soon as I returned her ball, she ran away. Is this true? boomed the king, turning to his daughter. I suppose I may have said something like that, grumbled the princess as she glared at the frog. I must apologize for my selfish daughter, said the king. Now tell me what favor you want. I will make sure she performs it. Thank you, sir, repeat. All I want is for the princess to give me a small kiss on my head, repeat. Yuck! I'd never kiss something that ugly, cried the princess. Silence, shouted the king. You will do as you promised. Now kiss the frog. Your highness, I only wished for a kiss that is willingly given, not forced, explained the frog. Well, then my daughter must learn to see beyond your looks. You will stay and be the princess constant companion. Oh, father, please, don't do this to me. You are ruining my life. Not a, one more word out of you, commanded the king. Now, frog, come join us on the table. That night, the kind frog ate from the princess plate drank from her cup and slept on her pillow. She didn't dare disobey her father's decision, but vows to herself never to kiss the slimy frog as long as she lived. The weeks passed and slowly the princess and the frog became inseparable. Despite her vow to hate the frog, the princess found herself enjoying his company. He was quite a gentle, intelligent frog and had a wonderful sense of humor. The frog told her funny stories about his travels to pond all over the world. And the princess gave him facials and manicures. One night, as they lay in bed, the princess leaned over without thinking and kissed the frog goodnight. Suddenly, there was a clap of thunder and a puff of smoke and the frog turned into a handsome prince. What happened? cried the startled princess. And what have you done with my dear frog? It is I, princess, replied the prince. When I was a boy, a wicked witch put a curse on me, turning me into a bullfrog. Only the kiss of a princess could turn me back into my human body. But why didn't you tell me this weeks ago? asked the princess. Because the kiss had to come of your own free will, and it would not have worked, answered the prince. The princess embraced the prince and told him she loved him with all her heart. Can you forgive me for talking so long to see what a beautiful person you were on in the inside, begged the princess, and the prince just took her head in his hands and kissed her. They were married on the princess's 18th birthday and lived happily ever after. This is the end. If you like my fairy tale, please put some up and see you next Saturday. Goodbye. See you.